Hey guys, it's Camille, and today I'm giving you guys the tutorial you have all been waiting for, and asking for, and tweeting me, and Instagramming me, and telling me to put out. Uh, thanks for doing that, by the way, because you really get me on top of my videos when you do that. But this is the tutorial on how I dyed my hair silver slash gray. And this is what it looked like. I did this about a year ago. I know it's crazy that it takes me a year to get these videos out, but I did film it and I'm finally getting it out now. So here you go. This is the process of how I did this color. Before this, I had my half and half hair, which you can watch. I'll link it down below. I faded it out with my method that I used in my video on how to fade out blue semi-permanent hair dye. You can use it on any color. So I used it on that, faded it out to blonde, and now you can follow me throughout the rest of the steps that I took to get this color in my hair. So this is what my hair looked like. I had roots grown out, some yellowish blonde hair going on. So first we gotta take care of those roots. I have to bleach the roots, and instead of bleaching all of my hair, I'm just doing the roots so I can save it. I'm using this coconut oil. It's by Dr. Adorable, I got it online. I'll link coconut oil down below. Um, I put this in my hair first so that it can sort of act as a buffer between the bleach and my actual hair. So this doesn't affect the actual bleaching process, but it does condition your hair and sort of help your hair resist the damage that bleach does because bleach is very damaging to your hair and I don't want it to fry my hair. So I put that all along my roots. I even pull it throughout the rest of my hair to make sure that it has that protective barrier. And this coconut oil is cold pressed, so that means that all of the vitamins and minerals, like everything good in the coconut oil hasn't been destroyed because of the way that it was extracted. So that's the best kind to get for your hair. Again, I'll link some down below so you can find it online. And I'm putting this throughout all my hair, saturating it, especially those roots that I'm going to be bleaching, just to make sure that once again it doesn't fry my hair. Especially since now that I've been doing my hair for a long time, you notice how it reacts to the curls and everything, and I'm just trying to keep my hair as healthy and curly as possible. So I put it up in a bun like this, smooth everything out, and then I leave it on for a day. So I leave it on overnight and I don't rinse it out. Then you want to throw on some gloves to protect your hands from the bleach. And I'm using this Prism Lights Bleach by Salon Care from Sally's Beauty. This is the blue one, and it's blue because blue is on the opposite end of the color wheel from yellow, so it helps counteract the yellowness in your hair, which is a very big issue for bleaching hair, especially dark hair. So I get one scoop of that and I put it in my mixing bowl. And then I'm going to add my Salon Care 30 Volume Cream Developer, that's also from Sally's. Um, I'll link all the products that I use down below, just so you can find everything easier. I like the cream better than the liquid one, but I think I might be trying out the liquid some other time. I don't know. If you guys have opinions about which one's better, please let me know. But I like to eyeball the amount that I use. If you guys don't want to do that, feel free to use the cup, the scoop thing that comes with the bleach to make sure you have the right ratio. And after I put in however much I think I need, I am use my hairbrush to mix it all up. And first I like to fold in the powder just so it like gets in there without coming up all in the air. And then I like to mix it around and stir it up and make sure that everything is blended well and it's smooth and not lumpy so that you can get even processing on all of your hair. Then I take out the bun. I still have the coconut oil in my hair, definitely leave it. Then I make a bun with the top section of hair. And I don't use a comb to comb it out, I just kind of separate it by curls so I don't have to mess up the curls that way. And I started using the brush to paint this on, but who am I kidding, I never stick with the brush. I just use my fingers, and if you guys wanted to make neater sections, then you could do that. I just like to separate it by curls because it's easier and it's just really hard to section off curly hair like you would with straight hair. But I do it with my hands because that way I can feel better, especially since I do my hair myself so I can feel the back of my head and you can't really feel with a brush. And it just helps me like kind of coat all of the hair better than a brush would. And I know you guys probably think this is unprofessional and if you do then you're absolutely right. This is not how professionals do it, this is just how I do it and that's what this video is, just me showing you guys how I do my hair. And I know this video was filmed like a really long time ago, which is really reflective in the kind of things that I did in this video. And I wouldn't use all these same methods today, but this is how I did my hair back then. And I will be doing an updated video on how I'm going to do my hair at the end of the summer if you guys want to see that. Definitely subscribe so you can see that.
Then I took out the top bun and put the hair in the bottom in a bun to get it out of my way. And now I'm just doing the same thing to this hair. I make sure I get like all the front of it coated and then I go in and layer after layer make sure that I get everything covered evenly. I do different sections of hair, flip it over, and I just make sure that all of the roots are covered with the bleach because you want everything to process evenly or else you're going to have like darker areas and lighter areas and we really don't want that. So I'm just making sure I separate everything and bleach. But if you have straight hair, it would be a lot easier and you could just go in with the rat tail of a comb and then just section it off. But you know, curly hair don't work that way, honey. So I got to do it this way. It definitely looks like a mess when I'm doing it, but I make sure everything gets covered. And then in the end, it doesn't look horrible. And this is just how I did my hair. A year ago. Now that everything is coated, I put the top section of hair back into a bun and then I let my hair process. And you want to just listen to the instructions on the bleaching thing. I left it in for about 45 minutes. I think this is what it looked like after 45 minutes. And you can see that the hair has lightened a bit, but it's more of like a golden color and it's not completely like blonde or anything. So you're going to want to wash that out. And you can see that when I washed it out, my hair is pretty yellow still, pretty orange. I still have some hot roots that need to be bleached again. You can't stop after just one bleaching if you have hair dark like mine, like a very, very dark brown that looks black. It will leave you with this golden kind of hair. And that's not good enough for using a really light dye on top of, like silver. These are the products that I use to wash and condition my hair. I use the Triple Nutrition line from Garnier. I've used that for like years, ever since it came out. And then I just had this damage eraser conditioner. So I washed and conditioned my hair after I took out the bleach. Then I let it dry and then I sectioned it off the same way I did before. And I just repeated the same process, putting in the bleach in the lower half section on the roots. And then after that's done, I just put all of that in a bun and then I work on the top section again and I make sure that I cover all the roots and I sort of section it as I go and just make sure that everything gets processed the second time so I can lift out more of the pigment so the hair will be light enough for me to go in with the toner and I just really need to get out that pigment so that's why I need to bleach it twice. So that's what it looks like after it's done processing and it's been in my hair for probably like 45 minutes. I washed it out. You can see that it's lighter, but it wasn't actually lifted enough. But I did go in with my generic brand of the Clairol Purple Shampoo Toner, and I really didn't need to at this point because my hair hadn't lifted enough. But I just want to show you the whole process of what I actually did. And I put this on the roots to tone my hair to like get out the yellow tones because purple helps neutralize the yellow orange brassy tones and I just put a thick layer of that covering all of my roots as you can see and this is what it looked like after I had it in for a bit I kind of rubbed it in a little bit but I didn't get it too foamy I left it in for 15 minutes then I washed it out and this is what it looks like you can see that my hair wasn't light enough for the toner to actually work but it did tone some of the sections of my hair that were light enough but that was not the roots and that didn't really help solve my problem because my hair was not light enough and that's a big lesson to learn. So I had to do another bleach and I put on the bleach again. My hair was like super dry and frizzed out at this point because I didn't even put any um, product in my hair after but I was just going to bleach it again anyway. So I did a quick bleaching. Um, this is what it looked like after I washed it out. It's a bit lighter but I really should have waited till the next day to bleach it again and that would have definitely been more effective but I didn't so this is what I was left with it's still kind of golden but it is a bit lighter and I just went with this so I used my color charm toner in T18 which is called lightest ash blonde now it used to be called white lady if you guys are familiar with the older packaging from like six years ago and this is what the bottle looks like so I just poured that into my mixing bowl that is also from Sally's this toner is from Sally's and then I use 20 volume cream conditioner. Make sure you shake, shake, shake. And then you put in the right amount in the bowl. This is what my hair looked like after it was dry with the roots that I just showed you guys. And now I'm going to apply the toner just to the roots so I can help neutralize some of that golden 
color that I don't want in my hair. I started applying it with my dye brush and just made sure I swept it on either side of the part and then the good thing about this brush is that it has kind of like a rat tail thing at the end so you can use that for sectioning off your hair and I used that to do different sections which is really annoying on curly hair and if you guys have curly hair I think you'll understand but I did that so I could get a very even application of this and it does take a lot longer but like whatever I just I went for it. I applied the toner to all of the roots and this is what it looked like after it kind of oxidizes it turns to a purplish color which makes sense because that neutralizes the yellows and oranges and that's what it looks like purple kind of like a silvery purple and then it kind of helps neutralize that. I left it in for 20 minutes and then this is what my hair came out looking like. You can see it's a little less golden and it has the purple color even brighter now. I washed it out and this is what my hair looks like. So you can see it's way less of the orangeness going on, which is very nice. Um, I definitely could have lifted my hair to another level before toning. And like I said, I probably should have waited until my hair was completely dry, waited the next day or week or whatever to bleach it again before toning, but I didn't. So now I'm just using that same generic shampoo toner and I'm putting it all over my roots, saturating it really nice. And then I am using a little bit more to kind of run through the rest of my hair and just kind of get a little bit of toning going on the rest of the hair that aren't the roots. And then I'm just wrapping that up and leaving that on top of my head and I'm just gonna let that process for a little bit not really process because it's not really like a chemical reaction but just sit there for about 45 minutes then I rinsed it out and you can see that it actually did really help and my hair at the roots are a little bit closer to white less orangey and you can see that it also toned the hair that was already light enough and it does leave it a little bit whiter and purpler but to fix everything, I'm using my Ion Color Brilliance Titanium Dye, which had just come out at the time that I was making this video, but it's just basically a silver dye, and I am mixing that into my bowl. Look at how shiny that is. It's like super metallic. And I'm going to add some purple, and I'm using Enrage's Purple Plum, and this is just going to help kind of neutralize those colors like I was saying before. If you add a little bit of purple um, dye in your hair, you can also neutralize things that way and I'm just mixing that together with some of the generic purple shampoo from Sally's and this is to dilute the dye and normally I'd use conditioner but this is just perfect because it will dilute it and tone it and kind of give that purple color correction as I go so I mix that all together it looks so pretty in the bowl then I just apply that nice gooey gooey gooeyness all over my hair I'm starting at the roots and then I'm going to lather it up and make sure everything is even, go through the rest of my hair and you really just want to make sure that you have it as even as possible. I evened it out and then left it on top of my head and now I look like I'm wearing some kind of crazy hat but it's even and it looks kind of cool and this is the kind of color that I was really going for so that I could once again neutralize but then also incorporate the silverish kind of grayish color. I left it in for about an hour and 20 minutes. It looks a little bit more purple now as you can see. I mean you're looking at it. You saw the before and after. I don't know why I just described that part but it's more purple now and it's probably because everything just oxidized a little bit more but anyways I rinsed that out of my hair and you can see that it took to basically everything except for the roots. Because the roots are very very stubborn and most of that was kind of just toning color correcting and that takes better to white hair so I wasn't surprised when this happened but this is the kind of color that I did want for my hair for the length of my hair so this is perfect for what I was going for for everything except for the roots but to take care of the roots we're just gonna add more pigment into those so it's gonna be more like dyeing the roots and toning the ends because the ends have already been bleached for several hair colors, so it's just going to take a lot easier. To do the roots, I'm adding more of the purple dye into my container, and I'm just adding this much, like two squirts. I'm adding some more of that silver dye, um, a lot more of it than the purple. That's the kind of ratio that you want 
And this is going to add pigment on top of my hair. So this is basically, I'm dyeing the roots and this is gonna cover more of the hair, especially since it's darker and it's not gonna just get gray by just toning. So you need the dye. Now I'm kind of folding that in together and making sure that the purple is evenly distributed within the silver. And you really just wanna try and make sure that's blended out and mixed up really well so you don't get chunks of different colors. And I'm applying this to my roots. So I'm just adding the dye to my roots using my fingers. These dyes aren't bad for your skin. It's just gonna stain your skin, but it's not bleach and it's not toner. So you don't really need to use gloves. Once again, it will stain your hands. I like that, some people don't. Wear gloves if you want to. It's just my personal preference not to, especially since it makes it easier to feel and apply for me. So I just put that all over my roots, as you can see, and I applied that as evenly as possible, like you wanna do any other application to anything on your hair. And it came out looking like this. The color blends pretty well into the rest of the hair, and if you want to just kind of bring it down a little bit, then you can, just to sort of blend it even better. But as you can see, it's like a mixture of purple and silver in my hair. I left the dye in for about an hour, and then when I came back after washing it out, it looked like this. And you can see that the hair is like purpley and silvery, which is kind of something that you have to do if you're trying to get silver or gray hair. You're gonna have to use something that's purpley to get to that point. And it's probably gonna be purple for a little bit, but after you wash it out, uh, after a couple of washes, it's going to go away and you're going to be left with a silverish grayish color But the toner like when it sticks to the whiter areas or more porous areas of your hair It's just going to show up more purple and it's going to go away after a while It's just color correcting and just accidentally sticks But anyways, this is what it looked like after everything was washed out and my hair is conditioned And then I took this video like a while later I don't know why I waited so long of what it came out looking like and my hair looks mad dreaded like it really looks like I have dreadlocks in this video because I just didn't separate the curls after I conditioned my hair that day but I swear I never had dreadlocks um, this is the kind of color that you'll get after the purple fades though so you can see that it's more silver and gray and not as purple as it looked before but that's just because the toner came out and like the purple little bits that were into color correct came out like I said they would before my hair does look pretty frizzy and dry in this video, which it kind of was, but I definitely learned how to take way better care of it after doing this color, which you can see in my up-to-date videos of my hair, and I will be coming out with a hair routine to show you guys what I do. But this was a picture that I took right after my hair had uh, just been washed and conditioned and started drying. It wasn't even completely dry, but you can see that it's like still purplish bluish in this and the purples haven't faded out yet. But then in this picture, this is taken later while I'm at school, you can see it's just more silvery gray, like some very true silver in there and it's not bluish, it's not purple. That's what will happen after you tone your hair and if you do the mixtures that I used in this video. Then this is later on where it's faded even more so I have more of a gray. Like before it was a little bit more silver in the past picture, this one's definitely more gray. If you don't touch it up, then your hair will progress in this kind of sequence of color. And here is a picture where it's also like kind of a whitish gray. Um, that's my aunt, she's not my blood aunt. You know how all black people be like, that's my aunt, when it's like their family friend that's just really close to them and like an age that would be close to that of an aunt, but she's not actually your aunt, but she makes you cookies and the best mac and cheese ever. She makes the best mac and cheese ever, so she is my quote unquote aunt. Anyways, that's my hair, look at it. This is a picture of my hair before I changed it, and you can just see how it's grown out a bit, but the hair color has only been updated once during the whole time that I had it, which was a couple months, and that's what it looked like, because I used a little bit more purple and blue in it. Anyways, that's how I dyed my hair silverish grayish, and I know you guys waited a year for this video, and I am so sorry, but I'm going to be more up to date with my videos from now on. I have some better techniques and everything, so look out for my video that I'll be posting at the end of the summer when I do my hair again. I have so many better techniques, it will save your hair, and you will thank me later. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please tell me in the comment section down below so I'll know what you guys liked. And if you guys have any questions, I'm always answering hair questions every single day of my life. 
But if you guys want to see more videos that I'll be posting, don't forget to subscribe. You guys can tweet me. You can tweet me hair questions if you need to get something answered urgently. Please follow me on Instagram, and I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Kisses. Mwah.